to our Total Education Centre's presentation on Kenneth's lesson. We brought you to the beach this morning so you can have an idea of what Kenneth Lesser was writing about in terms of his sensual imagery. You can hear it and you can see it. We're going to start with a reading of Beach Burial and then we're going to have a discussion on some of the key ideas and techniques that Slessor uses. Look out for our other lectures on Total Education's website, totaleducationcentre.com.au and we'll have lots of lectures that you can actually download and have notes for that discuss a great range of literature that will help you with your studies. Softly and humbly to the Gulf of Arabs, the convoys of dead sailors come. At night they sway and wander in the waters far under, but morning rolls them in the foam. Between the sob and clubbing of the gunfire, someone, it seems, has time for this, to pluck them from the shallows and bury them in burrows and tread the sand upon their nakedness. And each cross, the driven stake of tidewood, bears the last signature of men, written with such perplexity, with such bewildered pity, the words choke as they begin. Unknown seamen. The ghostly pencil wavers and fades, the purple drips, the breath of the wet season has washed their inscriptions as blue as drowned men's lips. Dead seamen. Gone in search of the same landfall. Whether as enemies they fought, or fought with us, or neither, the sand joins them together, enlisted on the other front. Everyone speaks of beach burial as a very, very sad poem. It's an elegy for soldiers dead in World War II. As a summary, the soldiers are rolling in the surf, they're being washed up on the beaches, they don't have identities, so they're being buried, each of them, as an unknown seaman. It's irrespective of what side they're actually on. So, I guess in many ways that's the end of the poem where it speaks about the dead being joined on the other front. Many people have seen that as, as death. To be honest, different people have seen the poem about different things. It's been thought of as an anti-war poem. Um, it has been seen as a Christian poem. It's even been seen as a, a poem about death and even the bonds of humanity. It's up to you to see exactly how you, you see the poem itself, but either way, all of those different ways of seeing the poem are linked to the notion of human experience. This poem is about people and our experience. Whether it's in war the focus or whether it's in death the focus, that's up to you. So if it's an elegy, it's a lament. A lament for dead soldiers lost near Alamein on the Arab Arabian Gulf. That was a battle fought in World War II in the Middle East. Now, Australians were definitely involved, and at the time, the Australian popular people would be monitoring the events. Now, Slessor was a war correspondent in that area, so he was very much moved by those events as they were unfolding. So he actually makes reference to the specific battle site at the conclusion of the poem, and that has a number of different effects. It definitely makes it legitimate. It's a real place. And I think that you have to see that this poem does present a very different view to the general triumph and heroism that was generally associated with that battle. So those people who see the poem as about being anti-war, they're very quick to jump on that and say, hey, this poem is definitely not celebrating the death because it was a victory. I think everyone agrees that the poem is definitely understated. It's a, a very poignant argument against the waste of war. And I do think there is a sense of the amount of people dying in the war being um, exaggerated or at least certainly given attention to in the poem. The first stanza begins very understated, softly and humbly. They're very soft sounds. And we're coming to the Gulf of Arabs. We've got convoys. Now, the word convoy obviously is emphasising just the amount. And we're talking about dead soldiers. So the notion that they are unnamed... They're dead sailors, at night they're swaying and they're wandering. There's a sense of helplessness there. The notion that they are actually at the mercy of the, the water is because they are the, the, the action of rolling them in the foam is occurring to them in the morning. Unfortunately, they are obviously loss of war. We have definitely in the second stanza a sense of the oral recreation of the battle between the sob and clubbing of the gunfire. You can hear the oral um, remnants of that particular battle. The use of the word someone shows a sense of uncertainty. It's like somebody, because of there's a sense of incredulity in this, this, it seems, has time to bury these men. And 
that someone is so understated, but it's definitely telling the audience that this is a huge event occurring that just occurs with such loss, but somebody is actually picking up these bodies and and giving them a, a grave. But we're plucking them from the shallows and burying them in burrows. And that's definitely got a sense of rhythm. Some people have suggested there's a sense of automation in that, that they are doing this so regularly that there's actually a sense of um, order in there. And that, of course, is going to further emphasise just the amount of people that are dying. The tread the sand upon their nakedness. Well, nakedness, obviously, we don't tend to think of soldiers or, or sailors as being naked, but the notion that they are here, I don't think they're literally naked, but I think they've been basically the vulnerability is being emphasised by that word nakedness. Now, in the third stanza, we speak about the graves. Each cross... The driven stake of tide wood bears the last signature of men. Now the cross, it does seem to be very crudely driven. Now those people who see this poem as a Christian poem, although to be honest, Slessor is usually, I think, said to be um, more an atheist. But if you do see it about Christianity, that notion of the cross, the driven stake of, t- stake of tide wood is considered important. But to me, that cross is more that it's quite rudimentary. It's, the, it, it's what they have. It, bearing the last signature of men I think that the next lines written with such perplexity with such bewildered pity resonates with that earlier incredulity that it, this this has occurred but the words choke as they begin ending that line with the hyphen there actually that's wrong the words choke as they begin ending that line with the dash replicates that that sense of inability to speak it's so amazed they are they choke because all they have is this unknown semen so the ghostly pencil wavering fading this is that you know that's what they're they're perhaps writing and and you know yourself if you wash out color um, it turns purple the black and that's I think what he's speaking about there but either way it's a very negative image I think of these poor vulnerable men who are being buried it's the last stanza that people talk about it moving away from an from a war poem because it's the last stanza that is pretty clear that it's not really about the allies beating the enemy because they're all together dead seamen gone in search of the same landfall there's an an acceptance of the other side also wanting the same thing through war and that of course would be victory it doesn't seem to matter whether they were the enemies or whether they were indeed on the same side as each other they were all joined in death And most people have seen that's what the last two lines are about of the poem. They've joined together, enlisted on the other front. Now, if you were thinking about it as being a particularly Christian poem, I guess people would see that other front as being heaven or hell, I guess. But for most of us, it would be perhaps just the human experience, that that experience of death. So ultimately, this poem has been seen by many people in different ways as being the focus. But most people would definitely agree that it's a very, very sad, sad poem. And the tone is so soft and slow and sad. And it definitely comes across as being an elegy for these dead sailors. Well, thank you, Susan. I'm Bruce Pattinson from Total Education Centre. And don't forget, visit us at our website and support us with help us make these videos. Thanks very much.